Hi, so in this video we're going to look at using Microsoft Planner for personal use. We'll see if we can do that right now ahead of all the announcements that Microsoft just announced to make that a little bit more easy. So if you come into Tasks by Planner and To-Do, which if you come in there now, you can see that it's a new Planner experience is coming to Teams. So the first thing that's going to happen is that's just going to be renamed as Planner. But until they actually do the update, then Tasks by Planner and To-Do is more accurate because the top bit is to do and the bottom bit is planner. If you want to come and think, well, I want my own my own plan. And usually when people say plan in planner, they want the board view of being able to move things around. They just don't want that to be shared with anyone else. So you think I'll come to new list or plan, give your list a name and then create in. You think, well, if I put it in my tasks, then that's going to be my own personal planner board, which it isn't, that's going to be a Microsoft to-do list, which is where the confusion starts, which is what Microsoft are hopefully going to fix in the new planner. So if we go, and I've created lots of lists already, so I won't create a new one. But if you put it in an existing team, that will create a planner board. If you put it in my tasks, it's going to create a to-do list. So if we come into tasks, which is the default to-do list, you can only see that as a list. I've got lots of lists set up in my to-do, which are grouped in to-do, which aren't grouped in tasks by Planet and to-do in Teams. But all of these are Microsoft to-do lists and they only appear as a list. There's no way to change that into a board view. If we come down into the shared plans, so you can add a planner plan into a team. Every team's got a default plan when you set up a team and you can create as many as you want. So in this team, we've got three different planner plans there. Uh, although actually one is the same, but in two different channels. And the default is in this view, it jumps into a list, but you can view it as a board and uh, drag things around. And this is the one I use for creating YouTube content. So pretty much the only way of getting a board view for personal use right now is to create a brand new planner and not invite anyone to it, which we can't do from Teams, because when we try to do that, it either goes in my tasks or goes in a team. So if we jump out into the web view of Planner, here we can see a few things. So one, you can see a couple of planners that I've put into loop, which we can't see in tasks by Planner and To-Do, which hopefully Microsoft fixing in the new Planner, given that loop's also the new thing. We can see all the plans that we've, we've got, and, and all of these are in Teams, because when you set a team up, it sets up a Microsoft 365 group and a SharePoint site and a Planner, and lots of other things. And usually the best thing to do is to arrange how you're working together into Teams because it sets up so much stuff in the background. If you want more help on that, we've got some videos to go into setting up Microsoft 365. Or if you're interested and need to make your whole organization work more efficiently, then consider booking a call using the link in the description below where we can have a chat and see if we're a good fit to work together. But I, that's what I do. I help organizations collaborate more efficiently internally using Microsoft 365 and all the nuances and all the best bits that we can get out of that software. So if we come into new plan, we get a few templates, which we didn't get when we did it in Teams, which may or may not be useful. I'm not a massive fan of some of these because they do things that I don't think you should do, such as backlog, uplext, in progress. It's like, well, there's a field in planner that does not started in progress complete. And if we're doubling up buckets for other things that are there, then people are going to get confused a lot. Well, I've, I've, moved, I've moved it to, com to complete. Actually, the task isn't showing as complete. Or you've completed something in up next before you, uh, it stays in the up next bucket as a completed task rather than being in progress or complete. So take the templates with a pinch of salt. Some of them might be useful because sometimes get people get confused with buckets and labels. And some of these are quite good examples of where you might you label and where you might these buckets. Um, I say some, there's probably like two that's actually got it right, the buckets not overlapping something else and the labels being something meaningful. But so we're just going to start with a, a new blank plan. We're going to put call this personal plan and you can either add it to an existing group. If you don't do that, it's going to create a brand new group for you just for that planner, which if you're an IT pro, you probably won't like because it's going to set up lots of digital clutter in your Microsoft admin. If you're in a big enterprise, your, your organization might have turned this off, but if you're in a smaller company, they might not have. 
And basically you, you can then select whether it's public or private, which is the same as when you set a team up, because when you set a team up, it's public or private, it just means someone can join that team or that group or that plan. And private obviously means you need to invite them, otherwise no one's gonna have access. So we'll keep it as private and create, and it says creating your plan. Now in the background, that's creating Microsoft 365 group. And we can see the group there, personal plan. And we've now got our planner for personal use. Amazing. So you can obviously do anything you can do in planner and just keep that for your own use. If everybody did that in an organization, then that would probably produce quite a lot of clutter because it's creating a group and a SharePoint site every single time you create a new plan, which is why a lot of organizations turn it off. And if you do use to do, then there's some limitations about having your personal plan, which Microsoft fixing in the new planner. And if you haven't already, go and check out this video on all the new features and some of the nuances and hopefully some of the downsides that Microsoft are going to fix uh, in this video. So we can add loads of different tasks into our personal plan. We can add a new bucket, get away tooltip. We can add as many buckets as we want, we can have labels, anything you do in planner, you can now do in our personal plan that we've made. Some of the limitations though, if you use to do, is that none of these tasks feed back into our to do. So it's not gonna appear in my day, it's not gonna appear in planned, because we're sort of, it's not actually a personal plan. That planner has no sort of concept of personal plans yet until the new planner comes out in spring 2024. And so if we did one of that to feed back through to our other tasks, so say we made a personal plan board for something specific, so like in my instance, I use it for content creation. If I wanna manage that alongside every other task, all you need to do is come and assign it to myself. So if I assign that task to myself, that will feed through into assigned to me and therefore will feed through into, well, there is a personal plan and that really insightful uh, task we made for ourselves, that will feed through into assigned to me and will assign through to planned and will pop up into two if we put a due date on it and all that good stuff. So here's one way that you can use Planner for personal use ahead of spring 2024 when hopefully Microsoft bring a fully fledged personal plan into tasks by planner to do in teams which is going to be renamed just as planner and therefore all of anything as it looks like and again check out this video to get all of the latest news on that looks like any list that you've got you can view as a board view or view as a list or view however you want so it's sort of bringing to do planner and project on the web as we said in another video all into one thing which is going to be just be called planner so hopefully it should be a bit easier but if you did want to use Planner for personal use ahead of that time and ahead of it being used, then hopefully this video has helped you do just that. So before you go, if you like the video, remember to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already. We've got new videos on Microsoft 365, Microsoft at Work, coming out at least every Tuesday. And thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in the next one.